All right, and hello everyone. It's Jennifer Britton, author of Reconnecting Workspaces, and I'm here today with Inga Nicholson, who is a leadership and team coach specializing in providing support for social impact organizations and also social entrepreneurs. So I'm really looking forward to sitting down with you today, Inga, and want to say welcome. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me here with you. Well, I'm sense. really enjoying this like conversation with all the different facilitators and coaches. It's just an opportunity to find out a little bit more about your world of work, how you're taking this resource out, because you're all using it in a little bit of a different way. So let's meet you first. What are you really excited about in your work right this moment? Well, I'm really excited, like in the conversations that I'm having with leaders and organizations, it's so clear that hybrid and remote work is here to stay. And, you know, some organizations have long been on the doing it. Um, you have been doing it for a really long time and tech companies in particular have been kind of working in this um, hybrid space, remote working space, but a lot of companies are really struggling to figure out how to how to reconnect after the pandemic. And um, they've been kind of winging it. And I think now is really the time to become really intentional about how you wanna move forward as an organization, as a team. And I'm super excited to learn from you or having you know, gone through the um, coaching training with you, Jennifer, to, to really um, support organizations with this transition into making this a permanent thing, reconnecting. That. I know you have such a strong focus on like the whole social impact and innovation. So, you know, what attracted you between like the fusion of reconnecting workspaces and the arena that you work with? What do you see as that fusion point? Ah, really good question. So well, for me personally, my attraction is that I, I'm really keen on, I'm, I live on a really small island. So for me, it kind of opened this um, space up for, for continue working remotely. And so there is that. And I think there's so much, um, there's so many cool tech tools now that you can use to bring innovation and creativity even into this remote space and not just being in you know, a physical space and using whiteboards. Like you, you have so many tools available now, tech tools that you can bring um, creative thinking, innovation processes um, that increase, you know, like your service offerings and your products. Um, you, you can do it right here on Zoom in the virtual space. And I'm, I'm really excited to um, use that as, as an enabler for organizations who want to increase their impact socially, environmentally. So yeah, I, I, I'm... And, and and bringing people from lots of different like bringing more diversity into the space as well i think is possible now using using the technology that we have in our fingertips and having it well facilitated and the coaching and the conversation is really well structured and facilitated. absolutely well that's that's a, the fusion point right it's the conversations with the technology bringing people from all over from walks of you know walks of life that we really wouldn't have brought into similar areas before. So I love hearing that. So, you know, from your perspective, why is it so important right now in this moment? And again, we're recording it August, 2021. So why is this body of work so important right now from your perspective? I, I think there's been like some pretty clear research or like data is coming out that a lot of people really have enjoyed the flexibility that comes with working from home. And, um, you know, knowing for myself, I'm really motivated to, to work from home. And most people like over, um, like three quarters of employees have indicated that they wanna continue working two to three days at home. And, and others wanna work in the, in the office, right? Because maybe they don't have a really great um, home environment. So. So I just see this incredible need helping organizations to figure out how to make that work. You know, like what are the policies and procedures that they want to implement? What are the roles? What kind of roles need to be created or revisited? Like there's so much to think through right now. I think it's a really potent time to 
to to support organizations and um, businesses with having these conversations and having coaching around it and um, yeah being really intentional about how they want to move forward because it's not just gonna it's not just gonna happen it needs intentionality well said well said and that, that's been a big focus of what we've been talking about at the certified coach program right like how mm -hmm. you that intentional focus to really have the most important conversations for the moment so you know some of i think some people watching this will probably have picked up a copy of reconnecting workspaces themselves uh, maybe they haven't but what do you like about the book in terms of you know have that as a support for others what what tickles your fancy I like everything about it. Um, it's it's like your Bible to come back to. Like it's such a um, practical tool to um, lean on. There's, um, you know, depending on what um, focus you want to bring to an organization, you know, maybe it's more like um, you, you say relationship and result. Uh, results no relationships and results equal to a high performing team right so so depending on where a organization or a team is in regards to you know do you need to help them build relationships and connections and trust or do you do they need to focus a little bit more on the action like regardless of how or where you want to support an organization or a team um, you can go to the book and and find some really practical tools and insights on how to do that so so i really love how um, each chapter gives you different access points to have these coaching conversations with with your clients fantastic well as you've been diving in you know, one of the things I've been asking all the certified facilitators is one, like what's your favorite myth or principle? Because every chapter has its own myth that we're debunking, a principle that you can use in your work in the remote, virtual and hybrid space. So what are some of your favorites? Well, one that just kind of came up um, because I was listening to a different podcast where Todd Rose was mentioned, who wrote the book, The End of Average. And this is really, very much busting the myth that you talk about also like everyone is the same which is not true right like we all are different and we all work in like if we work remotely we all have different office setups and so on so so really as an organization being really mindful of those differences and bring in a lot of empathy and you know listening design around being flexible and flexible around accommodating these differences I think is a big key for success and having really strong agreements on um, you know agreements will help dealing with these differences yeah so, so that's my my favorite myth <laughs> today <laughs> but all of them are all of them are really good yeah that's great and and do any of the principles stand out you know or the practices or the tools. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been also immersing myself in the positive intelligence framework that was um, designed by Shirzad Shamin. So um, I'm really strong believer that um, um, emotional intelligence, growing our emotional intelligence, is so important mm -hmm. and critical for personal success and professional success and organizational success, you know, like the more self awareness, social awareness, self management and relationship skills we have, um, the more successful and um, we will be in our work, you know, that's that that's what allows us to have resiliency, empathy, agility, it brings out our creativity to respond to whatever is needed. So I'm really big believer in building um, emotional intelligence and the importance of that. Fantastic. And, and so critical. Again, if we look at the research and what's been said about, you know, really thriving in the hybrid space, thriving through the disruption, it's those EI skills that mm -hmm. coming back as being raised as being so important. So, you know, talk to us a little bit about some of the tools, like the team tools, right? And so is there a team tool that stands out for you? that I cover in reconnecting workspaces that you think teams could really benefit from regardless of what area they're in. 
Yeah, this is a pretty broad tool that I know you use all the time, but it's so effective. I think that's why I, I find it really compelling and you use it all the time. And that is just bringing those visuals into the space and, and using the visuals in combination with asking really powerful questions to bring voices into the room, to open up the space, to go deeper in a conversation. And, um, and you know, I, I think, Again, you can use visuals. Um, if you haven't done any work with Jennifer yet, usually there are like a bunch of different pictures. And then is a question is like, pick a picture that um, um, expresses how you're feeling right now about X, Y topic. So, so I think using this visual tool um, is, you can use it in, in a lot of different contexts. And I, my experience so far has been that it always opens up um, a conversation and always opens up an opportunity for gaining insight. So um, I think it's one of my favorite tools to use. Fantastic. It's all about the visual. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So as you think about, you know, what benefits you gleaned by going through the certified coach program for reconnecting workspaces like what's helped you continue to evolve or what shifted in the time that we've been working together this summer um well i i learned so many different tools and tips and tricks participating in the program um it, what, what i really loved about I loved a lot of things, but I think what is really helpful or what was really helpful are the practicums. Um, so everybody has an opportunity to facilitate a coaching conversations with the rest of the um, cohort. Um, and there's so much richness in the learning that comes from that um, by seeing what works, what doesn't work, what could be better. Um, and then, you know, having to present yourself or, or hold the space for a conversation yourself. It really, I guess one of my big takeaways that um, you mentioned, Jennifer, is, you know, keep it simple. Um, it is so easy to um, add so much to a presentation, but really as a coach, you know, it is all about the conversation and taking it deeper and thus, you don't need much to facilitate that. So um, I guess that's one of my takeaways. Um, I really enjoyed how we kind of went through all the different chapters and talked about access points for having conversations with teams and organizations. So uh, I think that was really helpful to connect the content of your body of work with a practical application in the, in the real world. I'm so pleased to hear that, right? Because it really is in coaching. It's all about finding those, just as you said, those access points, those springboards into the conversation, into the deeper layers of, you know, the exploration and the action, the two things that we've been talking about today. Well, great. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you think would be useful for other people to know about either the book and that, you know, reconnecting workspaces itself or the coach training program? Um, I, I, I think the book is a great resource to have, regardless of, um, you know, planning to, to support teams or leaders um, re remotely, um, because it, it, it's really based on a lot of principles that, um, that are useful, applicable um, in any kind of teamwork um, yeah, if you're working in a team, in an organization, or you want to coach a team or an organization, regardless of it being, you know, virtual or not, there are lots of really foundational principles I think you can, um, find in the book. Um, what was the rest of the question about the, yeah, what, uh, you know, what else has shifted for you as well, you know, in terms of, your learning and and like what's possible, right? I write because I know the impact that my writing has had. So what do you think yeah. is possible for you as you go forward as a coach? Um, well, I'm super, I, I noticed that, that I definitely gained confidence in holding virtual conversations, um, coaching conversations, um, facilitating webinars or workshop in general. So 
Um, I'm really super excited to try out these different tools. And, you know, like you mentioned earlier, I'm really interested in innovation processes, bringing innovation processes to my clients. So I see there's a lot of creativity possible here. And, um, and having done a few practicums now and designed a few webinars that I want to launch, um, I've, I've been really enjoying um, the creative aspect of it. Fantastic. And I just, I think with your background and focus on sort of innovation and then looking at what the current world is asking of us, it's a great place to be looking. So thank you. So is there anything else that you, or let me ask you this, um, where can people find you or find out more about your work? Yeah, my website is www.ingamichelson.com. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn under my name. Uh, I will be launching a PQ, a uh, positive intelligence mental fitness program in September. So if you're interested in growing your emotional intelligence, that's something you might want to check out. And I am also kind of more towards the end of September, early October, I will be probably launching a five week long program, helping people reconnect remotely in the hybrid workspace. Yay, very exciting. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, Inga, for spending a few minutes sitting down this afternoon. It's always so fun for me to hear how all of you are taking this work out into your worlds. And do you want to let people know where you are physically in the world? Would that be something you want to share or not? Sure, yeah. I am on Salt Spring Island, British Columbia, which is a beautiful part of the world to be in. <laughs> it's right between Vancouver and Victoria. And it's so great that you're, you know, this is yet another option, yet another option for you to really be sparking those conversations and serving clients, not only in your backyard, but, you know, across the world as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know one of your principles is like, we're not islands, we are all connected. So uh, as an island dweller, this is really, you know, like, this is so clearly we're all connected and we can do it through technology, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for spending some time with us today. And <laughs> yeah, I look forward to our next conversation. Sounds good. Thanks, Jennifer. Take care. Bye.